There's a You're new welcome. twist in the bizarre saga of top officials possessing sensitive material. A small number of documents marked classified have been found in the Indiana home of former Vice President Mike Pence. His attorney says they were stored there by accident. Well, last November, a reporter asked Pence whether he took any files from the White House. As we sit here in your home office in Indiana, did you take any classified documents with you from the White House? Uh, I, I did not. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan. So his he, he did not think that he had. It sounds like he did. So I think what everybody wants to know, Congressman, is what's going to happen? Where does this story go from here? I don't know, but I think what we all expect is equal treatment under the law. And I will say this, Vice President Pence found it, fixed it, self-reported it. President Trump was working with the National Archives, with the Department of Justice. I think the difference, though, frankly, is uh, we saw this in a Washington Post story, Dana, where it said that Joe Biden's lawyers had a shared understanding with the DOJ to keep his document, classified document issue, quiet. So they kept that from the American people. And I think that is the big mm -hmm. difference here. Again, the vice president, uh, Vice President Pence, found it, reported it, you know, got it out there versus what, what uh, Joe Biden and his lawyers and the DOJ were working together to keep this information from the American people and understand, as we've, I think, pointed out several times, they knew this information before the midterm elections. Yep, that's and, a good point. And uh, didn't, didn't share it with the American yeah. people. Have you checked your closet, sir? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't think we got anything like that. Um, I, I wouldn't think anyone does. May, I mean, I don't know. Maybe who's next? Is, is Vice President Harris going to tell us something? Are we going to mm -hmm. keep going back and back? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, so what, what is important, and th this is what we're looking into in, in, in a big sense um, at the Judiciary Committee, is we've got to have one standard. We've got to have equal treatment under the law. And it's good to see what you just reported with what's happening now with, with uh, people who've attacked pro-life centers, because there have literally been over 100 churches, 100 crisis pregnancy centers that have been attacked. And this is the first time we've heard of anyone being charged with a crime. And when we had that many, of course, if you're a pro-life activist praying in front of a clinic, you get your door kicked in, they arrest you in front of your wife and kids, which is what happened to Mark Houck outside of Philadelphia. Okay. So uh, it's good to see what, we, what, what we're now seeing uh, with uh, people who've been attacked on the pro-life okay. side. We've got two more topics we want to get to, just about a couple of minutes left here. Uh, Adam Schiff and Eric Swalwell, they've been kicked off the Intel Committee. Uh, they were quick to respond to that. Give this a listen. This is Kevin McCarthy's way of getting and keeping the votes he needs to be Speaker. It's going to breed uh, distrust in the intelligence community. They're not going to want to share information with Congress that we need to make good decisions. It's political vengeance. It's too bad because that committee has always been a bipartisan committee, and he's taking one of the most precious pieces of glassware uh, in the congressional cabinet and smashing it. What do you think about that, sir? Always been a bipartisan committee? When Adam Schiff was chairman, are you kidding me? What they did to President Trump, what they did with their with the, the Trump Russia investigation. So uh, look and understand when when Adam Schiff was saying all the things he said that turned out not to be accurate, he was saying them as the chairman of the Intel Committee, a guy who gets briefed on things that the rest of the world doesn't get to see. So there is an air of of, of confidence in, that comes with that, but it turned out not to be accurate. So I think uh, look, Speaker McCarthy has been clear. He said he's told the conference. He said, look, if you saw the information that I get briefed on as part of the Gang of Eight regarding these two individuals, you would, make, you would be doing the same thing I'm doing. So right. I trust the Speaker, and um, they're not going uh, to be on the Intel Committee. Uh, on another topic, you, we have already seen how the White House is going to try to attack House Republicans and maybe the Republican Party uh, in general. It is on throwing granny over the cliff once again. Here, listen to President Biden, call floor number four. We also want to talk about... Uh, uh, the extreme Republican economic plans. Uh, apparently, they're generally serious about uh, cutting Social Security, cutting Medicare. I have no intention of letting the Republicans wreck our economy. And this is coming up in the context of the debt ceiling debate. How will Republicans fight back? Well, of course, we're not going to cut Social Security and Medicare. But what we are going to do is, is, is get a handle on this crazy spending. Now, understand this. Five weeks ago, the Democrats passed a $1.7 trillion bill that House Republicans opposed. And then one week ago, just one week ago, Corrine Jean-Pierre says from the White House, the White House will not negotiate with Republicans on raising the amount of money, uh, raising the debt ceiling. 
Are you kidding me? They spend like crazy just five weeks ago and now say, oh, give us more money so we can continue to spend and we're not going to talk to you guys. That is ridiculous and no one buys that. So we need, to, we need to put in place some structural changes that I think are important. Here's one that's real simple. How about the Senate do a budget, something they haven't done in years? You're going to borrow more money? You go to a bank, you're going to borrow more money? You got to tell the bank, here's, here's our business plan. You got to show them some kind of budget, some kind of plan. But the Senate hasn't even had to do that. So Chuck Schumer, how about you guys write a budget? And how about this one as well, Dana? What, what if we say if we get to the end of the fiscal year and we haven't funded the governor, haven't, the appropriation process isn't complete, then we just spend at the current level. We don't have some government shutdown, showdown scenario. We just spend what we're currently spending. After all, a lot of families have had to do that. A lot of businesses have had to do that. And frankly, they've had to do even they've had to deal with e even worse things because we got this record inflation can, can under Joe Biden. Majority, so those are some practical things. Can you get a majority of Republicans to vote for that? Yes, I or think no? we can. The, oh. I think we can. Yes, I do. OK, we'll see. Jim Jordan, thank we'll you for your time. Yeah, live on thank the hill you. there. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.